You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. Well, the culture is full of couples, but this is the culture's favorite couple, the custom couple. And we are with uh, Jake Shelton. What's going on? You're listening to Rod and Style Radio. How you doing, folks? So our buddy Mikey sent us your way and he was like, you got to talk to this guy. And I, of course, you know, the first thing I do is I jump on social media and I reach out and say, hey, you want to be on a podcast? And then I go and look at all of the all the fun things that you've done so far, and and your life has been pretty crazy uh, as far as you know, even the article that you sent me that with uh, all of the wonderful things that you've built for people. Uh, absolutely uh, stoked to have you on the show. So let's get into it, man. What what got you into all of custom culture? Oh, uh, into it since I was a child. Um, you know, I'm turning into one of the old guys now and pretty rapidly. And, you know, I grew up in the 60s, 70s. So I was big into the, you know, Ed Roth and, you know, all the all the custom culture stuff that was happening then. You know, that that was my jam. My dad was, you know, car guy, bike guy. And and, you know, so I kind of grew up in it like a lot of people. And uh, it was just a a different time back then. Did you grow up uh, building cars with your dad? What was he into, like, as far as that goes? He was into cars and stuff, but my dad was a, a diver. And so he had old cars, you know, had some motorcycles, but he um, didn't have as much time for it. So we didn't really build a lot of cars. I was out there trying to build cars. <laughs> you know, like I, they went to England. Dad was doing some dive research in London years and years ago when I was a little kid and I cut our riding lawnmower up and tried to make a dragster. Oh, that nice. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was like nine. They, they, they weren't thrilled with that, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'd get a bicycle. The first thing I do is tear it down, customize it, make it into a chopper. And, you know, of course, you know, evil Knievel and all that was huge at that time. So, you know, oh just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, my was, my brother he got into a lot of trouble with uh, tearing apart things that didn't belong to him, and then not being able to put them back together. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm sure you ran into that a lot. <laughs> a few times, yeah, yeah, once or twice, and then you know when Dad had time, he would help with something, you know, work with a project and and things. But yeah, it was a definitely an interesting childhood. I saw recently that you uh, posted up a bike that you did for your friend, or you did the paint, and I really like yeah. the name of it. It was the Creature from the Junks Lagoon, and I absolutely, yeah. I absolutely love. That's my favorite Universal monster for one. But I saw the paint you did for that, and I thought that was freaking amazing. The color was beautiful. Well, thank you. It was, yeah, it was a pig and gold based candy green, and he's an old friend of mine. I, I lived in Richmond years ago, and uh, for, you know, many years I was there and he was just, he was an old friend of mine from there and that's his first bike build. So, you know, it was a real honor to, to be able to do that for him. It was really cool to be a part of it. And that is, that is super cool. Now you've been into this for quite some time. Uh, you know, it, did you go to, uh, did you have any like schooling when you went into, you know, wanting to do art and wanting to do paint, uh, things like that, were, was that something you were interested in, even in like the school age years? Oh, I was, I've been an artist since I was a little kid. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's really pretty much all I've ever done and all I've ever really wanted to do. Now, you also do quite a bit of uh, interior work. 
So, like, I mean, just like I said, scrolling through all the, the wonderful projects that you've had uh, and the people that you've done projects with. And then the, the bus that you showed me, uh, of course, that was uh, tugging at Sam's heartstrings because I think you have a, a Buick <laughs> yep. uh, rear end in it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going candy tangerine with that thing. Ooh, that's pretty. And probably candy tangerine with uh, cream tuck and roll, I think is what I'm going to do. Oh wow! Not positive yet. I, you know, I need to get. It's out in Arizona. It's out at my buddy Robert's compound, so I need to go out there and pick it up soon. And how long have you been working on that? I've I've had it for uh, fifteen years, sixteen years, and haven't really worked on it that much. But I've had it for a long time. What what made you want to jump onto a, a project that that huge, or what? You know, what's the the final goal with it when it is completely done? Are you going to drive it around? Is that going to be like a, oh, a yeah. travel? You know, your whole travel yeah, trailer right there in that bus. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, a little cool little motorcycle that goes back into the engine room, which is also uh, I'm putting the bathroom and shower back there, and uh, and it's got you know it's got a king size in it right now, but I'm going to switch it down to a full or queen so I can make a walkway through to the bathroom. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use it for traveling around, put a kitchen in it and gas log fireplace and all the necessities. Yeah. Uh, do you, yeah. Uh, do you go to like the car shows or the art shows? Or, like, where are you going to feature it at? I'm not really going to feature it. I'm just going to drive around and travel. <laughs> have fun. I like that. It's I like, really... we're just going to jump on the road and do this thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much where you know, we're at. <laughs> yeah, I don't do a lot of um, shows. It's it's pretty rare, and um, you know, promotion wise, just social media, and then you know, some magazines, you know, here and there, pick up stuff, and you know, whatever TV crap I do. And that, other than that, I don't really do a lot. That I, I definitely wanted to jump in with you. What? What did you do to get put out on such platforms to be able to do some of the uh, the art and the sculptures that have been featured in movies that I'm sure a lot of our, our uh, listeners have seen? They've probably seen your art in several different places and not even known it. What got you into yeah. that level of, of sculpting and building? Um, th they call me. <laughs> I, you know, it's, I, um, I'm, I'm not trying to be facetious. It's, uh, um, I've always been very oddly, uh, well connected. Okay. You know, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I just, you know, for whatever reason, I've met a lot of people that I've, you know, become actual friends with and, and, uh, life has just sort of happened. Yeah, Sama says that about me a lot. I'm so social that you know I just know everybody. You know too many damn people. You know too many <laughs> damn people. He, I swear to God, this man, we can go anywhere, anywhere in the 50 states, and someone's going to know him, and it is the most <laughs> ridiculous thing. I'm like, how? How is this even possible? Yeah. I mean, it's great, but it's just like, fuck, man. I just want to go into the store real quick and leave. It's never like that. No, that was, I moved to New York, and I was all excited because I wasn't going to know anyone there. And I was there for less than an hour. And I was walking through, uh, uh, was it, uh, Bird off, um, Goodman's and, and there's, there's like two friends of mine from Charlottesville, Virginia. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you know, really of all places. Like, yeah. Well, is, uh, is New York where you, uh, where you ended up crossing paths with like Indian Larry and doing you know no. some of that stuff, or how did how did that become a, a thing? That that was actually um, the very first time I ever showed my work. It was in Richmond, Virginia, and there was a bike show going on. And the guy who was a promoter asked me to bring some stuff out. He knew me, and he used to come by. I had a custom body shop at that time, and you know it was busted cherry auto body. Let us reverginize your rod, <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, he stopped by and asked me to bring some stuff out. So I did. And Indy and Larry and, and um, English Don were there, you know, doing the MC. And and um, they actually made me like a little trophy. And English Don comes up, the trophy we want to give the most. 
we don't have one for us. So we, we made one real quick. <laughs> but, and then that's when, that's when he called, called me the Martha Stewart for hell. <laughs> Which that is, is such is an cool. endorsement. That is such a cool endorsement. Yeah, uh, I, I, you know, that that's huge, and and so rad that you know you you were able to do something on a level that caught their eye that they went and created something right then and there. It was like we have to give you. Yeah, something. <laughs> I mean that was. I mean that was that was. Yeah, you know, it's a really special, and it's just uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's like a cool little thing that's that's huge to me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah just absolutely. I, you know, Indian Larry's and English Honor, you know, they're they're like a they were partners for years, and um, I caught up with uh, Don before he passed away, and and it had been several years since I had talked to him, and uh, I just kind of reached out. It's like, hey, Don, it's Jake uh, from, you know, Busted Cherry, and then he was instantly he was like, shovelhead shitters in a you know, Falcon couch. I was like, yes, <laughs> just instantly. <laughs> and this was, I think three months before he passed. I don't know if you saw the toilet on my feed, but I made a really cool toilet. One of those is going on the bus. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. And then I'm, I'm going like, to redo it. Like you've done, uh, you know, you've done work that was uh, featured uh, with Tommy Hilfiger and, you know, you're mm -hmm. in, in movies like what, like that is just so rad. So you did a sculpture. I was reading in that article that uh, was in Iron Man or Iron yeah. Man three, right? Iron uh, Man three, yeah. Tell me about the the cars that you used for that, because I think it said in there that they were cars from the second Iron Man, and then you yeah, sculpted were, them into into something for the movie for the third one. Yeah, there were a bunch of parts from the the crash scene in Monaco where Mickey Rourke's character cuts up all the cars with like light, you know, the lightning bolt whip thing. And they called me and wanted me to do the sculpture. And they thought I was still out in Tempe, you know, out in Arizona. And I was like, no, actually I'm like three miles from the studio here in Wilmington. Like what? I was like, yeah, I'm down on water street. And like later that afternoon, I had like 30 pallets of parts that were just like all this disassembled craziness <laughs> in the shop. And, you know, they gave me sort of an idea of what they wanted. So I, you know, I, you know, the next day I kind of walked in and looked at everything and, you know, looked at a picture of the space it was going in. They curved the staircase for the Iron Man 3 and Iron Man 2 it was straight. So I decided to do like a tornado of parts. And it's got 249 Plymouth inner fender wells in it that were not from the movie. They were just parts I put in there. But it, they made the spiral perfect so i put that in there just kind of about 20 minutes kind of zip tied everything together and called us like you know i got a sort of a direction of where i'm going and they came in and the art director and favreau were like stop don't touch it it's perfect i was like oh man come on <laughs> really <laughs> you know really I mean, it's, come on <laughs> you know so i didn't really do exactly what i wanted to do but they were stoked with it so it, there's been cars else. in my driveway that ended up like that, you know, 20 minutes before having to head out to a car show and we're still mm -hmm. buttoning things up. And then it's like, OK, we're good. We're, we got to go now. <laughs> that's that's pretty much how the Buick feels. I I've, I've like want to have I started buying parts for my car so I can start, you know, doing what I want and making it how I look. Yeah. And there's like. We just don't have enough fucking time yet. And I'm like, I just want to do it. They're like, no, it looks good the way it is. I'm like, but it's not what I want it to look like yet. <laughs> like, that's what y'all don't get. Like, it's not there yet. I love it, but yeah. I need my little tweaks. Now, is this, is this, uh, he was saying this is your forever car. This is my forever car. I, I this is my dream yeah. car. I originally, it was between a 59 Buick or a 59 Cadillac. But I, I'm a huge fin girl. I love fins, and I love the fact that my 59 has fins in the front of it. It just looks so evil mm -hmm. and mean to me. So what I've told people is that I want to do, like, the cramps, like, Lux Interior-themed car. So I have, like, one of the songs that I picked. I'm going to do, like, my favorite colors of, like, black and red. And I know everybody's done that, but, like, it's just my favorite. And, uh, yeah, no, it's going to be my forever car. Well, it's not like you can just invent a new color that people haven't used yet. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. There's just, 
I don't know. I just love this fucking car. Like every time I look at it in the driveway, I get excited. Like I've driven it in a hundred degree weather and I don't care. Like I'm drenched in sweat. I'm like, no, this is the best car I've had. Yeah, that's what's up. The other part to it is, you know, we both work day jobs. Like, you know, I'm an aircraft engine mechanic. Sam is a nurse. You know, we do 50 to 60 hours a week. We don't come home and paint cars. Like, we're not, you know, like we have. We painted one. We we have done it, but it's not <laughs> something that we normally do. So it's like not everybody can just be, you know, Larry Watson, you know, and just come up with the most rad paint job you ever saw in your life. And, you know, and also get up and go to work, you know, separately to, you know, to do something else. You know, it just kind of yeah. doesn't fit that way. So it's cool that we have like all the friends that we do because we get a ton of ideas for things that mm-hmm. we that we want done. And we have folks, you know, in the pocket that we could reach out to if, uh, you know, if it comes down to let's get a paint job put on the car. You know, we've got people that can help us with it. You know, but, you know, really a lot of the stuff that we do is right here in the driveway. And Sam you know, is learning. it's not a race. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know? once you find the forever car, it's definitely not a race. It's like, you know, it might take us five years, but, you know, when when that five years is up, it's going to be something cool. I mean, yeah, it took me, it took me, this was the fifth car that I came in contact with that I hope they didn't get bought from under me because yeah. I, I called, like, so I found, an, I found one the first time and it wasn't, uh, what is it called? Because I know mine's a flat top. What's the other one called when it's not? A uh, bubble top. Bubble, like, yeah, the kind of the curve. I didn't like it as much. I was like, nah, it just doesn't look, like, I don't care. A lot of people have different opinions about two doors and four doors. I really don't care. I like the long ass boats. Those are my favorite. <laughs> and so that was like the main thing I was looking for. And I was like, okay, this one's kind of cool. And by the time, I think maybe two days later it was sold. And I was like, shit, I was just talking to this guy. And for some weird reason, like, these cars were selling <laughs> like crazy like they would only last like a maybe a couple hours and then they're already pending and like i don't know what mm-hmm. happened now now like people are selling i don't know what the hell happened but i think this is so this one was my fifth one that i got in contact with the with the guy's wife and then lane wind up knowing him when i gave him the number i was here can you call him can you talk to him because he knows all about his car i don't think his wife knows that much about it so i'd rather you talk to him and then you make a deal and you wind right. up knowing him. Yeah, yeah. We, back to that whole knowing everybody everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I dialed yep. a number and it, it it was a number that was already saved in my phone. I was like, oh, this will be easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was Sometimes really cool. He, yeah, I mean, it was like, sounds like that car was supposed to go to you. Oh, yeah. I still keep in contact with them. Uh, his name's Mike. And this was like his car that he had for a very long time. He had a podcast that was, you know, around the car. It was the main like uh the emblem for it and everything and i still talk to him every now and then whenever we go take it out or i start getting stuff for it or you know do anything with it i send it to him and he like always tells me he's happy that it came to me because i i i was a fangirl about it i was like i really want this car you have no idea i love this car like you'll make me the happiest person in the world because i really want this fucking car and it was just yeah it's not going anywhere it's mine Yeah, that's cool. Jake, do you have a, a forever car, one that you just had to have and will not get rid of when you, once you had it? Uh, not right now. Um, I've got one coming up that I'm going to build that'll be that'll be a forever car. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got it's got a ton. It's going to have a ton of history with me. Oh. So yeah, I don't know if you saw like the green and black '61 Chrysler Couch. I did. Yes. Okay. That thing, it's very first life. I did a custom out of my old, you know, out of busted cherry auto body for this guy. And it was the parts car. And so I cut the fins off and I've got the dashboard, which I've been dragging around forever. And, um, the very first life out of the body shop, you know, first it's a car. And then I ended up making a booth out of those fins for a restaurant I had in Virginia in Richmond. And then that shut down after nine 11 and I moved out to Arizona and I had sort of started that couch. And then some friends of mine worked for Fender music and I did the, um, all the furniture and stuff for their green room for, um, their 60th anniversary. Oh, wow. And they wanted, 
a bunch of stuff and I said, I'll do this and this. He goes, you got to finish that couch. And I was like, I'll finish it, but I get to keep it. You have to buy it, but I get to keep it. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. So they, they paid me to, you know, finish it and that. And then, you know, they kept a few pieces. I got to keep that. And it was cool. Cause like, you know, it had everybody from like Jeff Beck to, you know, Pete from SoCal was there hanging out and a bunch of other people were on that couch. So it was kind of neat. And then I kept it for years and a buddy of mine talked me out of it. And, you know, after years and years of trying to get it and then I sold it to him and then his art studio caught on fire. Oh no. And it got burned up and I got the parts back. So I'm going to build a bubble top out of those fins and dash. Oh, that's something yeah. you don't see a whole lot of. Mm -mm. I think yeah, uh, I'm building one right now for my client, Aaron. And after I get done with that one, I'm going to build the one for myself. And I've got a Hemi engine, you know, old school Hemi that's going in it, the fins, the dash and everything else. So it'll be kind of similar to, um, to Aaron's car, the Plowfink. Okay. Man, you know, that... it's going to have that s sort of vibe. You know, it'd be different than his, but um, it'll be sort of that kind of vibe. Yeah, that's that's really cool. The, the old bubble tops, you know, I know Ed Roth did a few. Uh, they were just, you know, really cool, iconic, you know, crazy customs. Uh, we had Ian Russell on our show uh, a couple months ago. And I know yeah. back in the day, he, he did a few that were really cool. And uh, we ended up... Uh, talking to a guy that ended up with one of his old cars and mm -hmm. uh so he made a bubble top version of a car and then the the uh our friend jeremy ended up with the original version of it and and rebuilt it so at some point they're gonna have those two cars together for a photo shoot i know it's gonna happen oh that'd be cool but yeah man, I, that's really cool do a do a bubble top that's just yeah those wild customs like that you just don't don't see a whole lot of people doing them right now so i'll, I'll be stoked mm -hmm. to see that i talk to eric all the time he's he built the iron lung okay yeah that's the yeah it's the you know sort of off off center uh t-bird i think he's got a nail head in his but yeah, he, he he goes out and does some stuff at Ian every now and again, which is cool. Yeah, I believe they were just out there uh, doing uh, some kind of crazy trike-looking thing that was really wild. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to get uh, get Ian back on and uh, talk about that now that they now that they uh, finish that one up. So it's, that thing in the videos looked freaking rad. Yeah, yeah, he does <laughs> some crazy stuff. I mean, it's like. You know, the, the whole TV thing, it would drive me nuts. It's like, you know, you got 30 days to finish. It's like, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I could never. Yeah. Yeah. Reality TV kind of does that to some folks. It, it's cool, though, because like with Ian, like it doesn't seem to phase him at all. Like he's just like, this is what's in the shop and this is what we're working on. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is a photo chop version of what I'm doing that I just sent you. And it's, uh, except I'm doing like more like of an, an egg shaped bubble, kind of like the one that I'm building now. Ooh. Oh, that'll look really sweet. Yeah. And it's not going to be red, but I mean, just, I chose that cause it made it easy to Photoshop up <laughs> <laughs> and I'll do probably a, uh, three deuce intake instead of the, you know, eight just for, I like the. It's too heavy for me. So why not make it 12 Visually. while you're at it? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to building it. That's so awesome, man. Like I like I really do. I know I keep going back to it, but like all the cool like furniture that you've built over the years is just really wild. So, I can understand like why Mikey was like you got to talk to this guy cuz like he's a he's an interior guy. He loves that kind of stuff. So, like we might have uh, Samus Buick go to him to get some of the seat work done by him. Mm -hmm. But uh, oh, cool! You know the right on. the couches and stuff that you're doing are just wild. I so know, they're so nice. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. It's um, you know I haven't been doing as much over the past few years as I used to. I used to do a ton of them, 
there's a lot of people doing it now, which is cool. And, uh, you know, I am building, I'm doing a Christine couch right now. Oh yeah. And doing a 58 a, Plymouth. Yep. And it's, you know, they're old crusty parts. So I'm doing it kind of like Christine got in a crash. Oh, I okay. Do the pat- patina thing. But with this, it's like, okay, I can make that stretch. <laughs> you know, other than that, I like to clean and custom, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the whole patina thing kind of, it's all right. You know, some people love it. It's just not my deal. I'm right like there with you. Custom clean thing. Yeah. Right. Cause they're... I'm also doing a Oh, go ahead. 60 hearse. I'm also doing a 60 hearse couch, Ooh. which is going to be kind of a tribute to the misfits. Oh, that'd be really so, cool. Did you yeah. ever see the original misfits? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah. You saw them live. I did not get to do that. So that <laughs> I'm jealous now, but I did get to see the cramps before Lux passed away. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. I saw, I saw the cramps a bunch of times. I, uh, last time I saw them, I was at the, the, uh, nine 30 club in DC, or, you know, the new, new one, not the, not the OG. Mm-hmm. Which I saw him at the original one too, but, um, I was up on the upper thing with, with poison Ivy's dad. And it was like right before Thanksgiving. Wow. And I was like, so man, what's it like to have Lux at your dining room table for Thanksgiving? And he just kind of shook his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, I mean, wow. You know, I don't know how much you know of their story, but for their story, they did pretty well. Absolutely, they did. No, I'm a yeah. I'm a huge uh, Cramps fan, and you know, getting to see them on on their last tour, I always tell people this story where I, you know, there was three bands playing that night. I got to get all the way up to the front uh, during like the first band, and then it just got completely shoulder to shoulder packed, so I couldn't move from where I was at. But once the Cramps came on. Uh, during uh, Big Black Witchcraft Rock, uh, Lux reached out into the audience and grabbed me and just shook me like, you know, <laughs> like I was a rag doll. And it was like That's the most awesome. amazing thing ever. Like, yeah, the, the cramps is like a, a huge deal in, in my life. And then, you know, now, you know, Sam is all into them and, you know, she's wanting to create a whole car around it. And I'm like, yes, yes, we can absolutely <laughs> do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and it's, I mean, yeah, it just can't get much cooler than that. No, really, and it and it's so wild. Like uh, Lux and Ivy were like huge uh, record collectors, mm-hmm. and like a lot of the the Cramps uh, songs that they put out, like they were covers from like B sides and like old fifties records that you know people just you know you you didn't hear a whole lot of and they were like all into it and they made some really cool versions of some songs that probably never got airtime you know when they were original so it's like you know it's super iconic band yeah what was uh what was your first punk show oh god uh don't worry i can't remember mine either um (laughs) i like how you asked that but you don't even remember yours (laughs) I don't know. My very first concert ever was was Johnny Cash in 1969 at the Daniel Boone Amphitheater. Wow, that is awesome. I was five. So like when he asked June Carter Cash to marry him, like in the movie. Yeah. It was a couple couple shows after that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that ages the hell out of me. I mean, no, I five, no, not at all. Still. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. People don't do math, please. Yeah. We, don't math here. we don't do math on this podcast. We don't do math here. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm 58 in September, man. Two more years, I'm 60. That is awesome. I'm I'm right there yeah. behind you at 38. <laughs> yep. Right behind me. Right behind you. <laughs> I'm not. We're, Sama doesn't play this game. I don't play this game. <laughs> Shoot, I, I love it. I, I think it's, it's cool. When I turned 50, I thought it was kind of rad. You know, nobody knew it. I mean... You know, unless I said something, <laughs> but like, you know, I think it's just keep keeping a young attitude, and you stay green, and you grow, and you get ripe, and you rot. Yeah, that's absolute facts. Uh, you know, yeah, I think the, a lot of the things that I did in my twenties probably aged me a little bit, but uh, you know, when I got into my thirties and matured a little bit, it was a little easier time. But yeah, a, a lot of my friends tell Sam all the time, like he does not look like he's about to hit forty. 
how are you doing this to this man? Because I make you do <laughs> shit. <laughs> right? The, the so. age old story of, you know, when we first met, he was done with the car scene. I was like, well, you want a hot wife, right? Well, I want a car and I want to be in the car seat. So you're going to have to, <laughs> you're going to have to jump back into that shit real quick. <laughs> right? But yeah, you know, music, going out to shows and, you know, dancing, dancing, like staying in shape. Like those are all things that like I wasn't doing at that time. And uh, we when I got back into it, I saw that my health was getting better and I was getting into better shape with everything. But I think Sam is just a fountain of youth. So I might be stealing her youth you away from her. You might be. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So, Jake, what are you what are you uh, working on right now, other than trying to uh, move out of six thousand square feet? <laughs> well, I'm not moving out of there. My parents, and it's just got finished, and they, you know, they we have a my parents have another house up at a lake and on the Virginia Carolina border, so they're going to stay there for three months, and they bought another house and didn't exactly downsize, which was <laughs> my sisters and I like. The hell's wrong with you you know it's it went from six bedrooms to four but now they went from 25 acres to a 40 acre freaking farm oh my god wow yeah yeah so no yeah. I, I didn't mean that you were moving i physically you were moving out of yeah. six thousand yeah. square feet onto a 40 yeah. acre farm that that does sound like when uh when we had to move mom and dad up to their retirement home that uh, they yeah. jumped onto five acres uh but on a lake and yep. a lot bigger house so i know the pain man i do know the pain uh well, i had know, to do it in the rain about it. i hope they have fun <laughs> i know, had yeah i had to something. i had to do all that in the rain so at least that <laughs> kind of sucked but uh yeah you know, but now you know it is it is a lot of fun you know to get to go and uh enjoy it after it's all like moved in and you know yeah it's got a big pond on it so I'm, i told him i'm gonna put a houseboat on it and that'll be my my place when i'm there i love it yeah yeah, yeah we, can, we can totally see that happening put a houseboat in the middle of the pond the boat taking up the entire pond <laughs> <That's> right <laughs> yeah yeah but, no, that's gonna be it's gonna be fun but yeah I'm, i don't know working on that i got a couple paintings going right now and and i'm working with a friend of mine who's also a furniture designer out of portland doing some really high end tables for, for him. Really? Which he asked me to do. I've never done that before. And, you know, he and I have always talked about materials and everything. He's like, Hey, you want to build some of these in fiberglass and carbon fiber? And I'm like, sure. And then, you know, it's been a tough thing to figure out. You know, it's a simple looking design, but, but complex to make. So I'm almost done with the first one of those, but he's, won a bunch of design awards and been flown all over the world to talk about it. So it's kind of neat to be a part of that. Yeah. And it's the first time I've ever done anything. Like I've never done anybody else's. Um, I've always just done my own designs and work. So it's kind of neat to do that. Yeah. I was, uh, I was reading in there that you have artwork all over the world that uh, you've, you've been, you know, sold to, you know, uh, sold pieces to all six continents that are inhabiting people. So that's kind of wild, man. Did you get to go on the road yeah. and travel at all while doing that? Or how did that come um, about? No, I mean, just people have ordered stuff everywhere, but Antarctica. Nobody's ordered anything from there yet. Those so. damn penguins. <laughs> I know. Damn it. But no, I, I got flown like um, I did a drive-in theater theme for Royal Caribbean for their, when they built Allure of the Sea at the time, it was the largest ship. So they flew me out to uh, Turku, Finland to do the install, which was cool. Wow, that's cool. How was Finland? It was neat, you know, and it was cool too because like the ship was two weeks away from getting ready to leave, um, you know, the where it was being built and go to Miami. Mm -hmm. So it was basically finished and I had like just free run of the thing. And I was out there for, I think they flew me out for nine days to put on 12 bolts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was ridiculous just to cover their ass. But, uh, you know, but I got to really just, you know, go through that thing. It was absolutely amazing. I'm like, like a cruise ship person. But, I mean, this thing was, I mean, it was unbelievable. 
yeah, the hallways no, between the rooms were like 500 yards. Oh, geez. Yeah, 15 floors a side and uh, had the largest restaurant in the world on it and had, uh, you know, pools that you could surf in, nine-hole golf course on the back deck. So it was a, a small was little thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A bunch of big, like, several thousand people amphitheaters on it. Golly. God. It's yeah, a, it's it start it starts floating from Europe and in like within twenty minutes the front's already to uh, the states and the rear is still yeah sitting it just kind of Europe. bumps back and forth like you're in a bathtub <laughs> yeah <laughs> the kids sliding back and forth that sounds freaking yeah. huge man that, it was ginormous yeah we haven't so been on any uh, any cruises I think we might try to do that once but I get seasick like you wouldn't no, believe I can't swim you oh, know yeah, how fucked Sam? I'd be if I fall that's it <laughs> well even the the <laughs> toughest swimmer probably couldn't f- survive that one I'm sure <laughs> no yeah. no sir I like mm-mm, nope <laughs> I go to where it hits my knees I'm done I don't go any further than that yeah oh man that's that's no <laughs> I, I, I live at the beach here so I go I, surfing. I like the beach. I just can't swim in it. It's great. <laughs> she, she's better right at the on. desert. <laughs> you know, all the sand, none of the water. No, no. I got <laughs> what? I do. I do the the shameful floaty. I'm like, just leave me alone. I'm just gonna hang out in a floaty all day. Just don't try and fuck right? with me because I will fall through it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I love living in Arizona. I was out there for ten years, and I loved living there. It was fantastic. You know, it's funny. Everybody always says like Arizona is like super hot, but it's a different kind of heat. You know, they always say that that term right there. It's a different kind of heat. And I, I tell people South Texas is super hot and don't come here. Pretty much. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So what uh, what had well, you you moved from Arizona to, to North Carolina, to be closer to family. But what has you in uh, Arizona to begin with? Well, after I shut my restaurant down after 9-11, and mm-hmm. Richmond and I had a couple of friends that were out in Tempe, and they're like, you just pack up and come out here. So I did. <laughs> you were just a, and, the uh, Jake of all trades, you know, it, owning a restaurant and being an artist and a sculptor and just do a little bit of everything, man. I dig that. That's been a weird life. <laughs> for sure. You know, I've only worked for myself. You know, I had a few, very, very few jobs, jobs. But for the most part, I've just worked for myself for years. And, and that, uh, that's the that's the goal with both of us, to get to a point where we're uh, working for ourselves. But right now, it, it's just doing too well for us to, to continue our, in the jobs that we've got currently. So, Chuck, yeah. I'm going to need a pay raise at some point, just to let you all know. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's like you got to make the jump. And for me, it was like if shit hits the fan, I'll sleep in my truck before I'll go get a job and make what I do a side gig. Yeah. Yeah, I got into I, I got into that conversation with a guy at work today actually. Like he was talking, you know, like how do you work for yourself? How do you do that and make that work? And I'm like, well, do you have like you said, you have to make that jump. You have to say, you know, you know, I'm not afraid to fail. And when I fail, I you know, I sulk in it for about 5 seconds and then I get back up and do something else and figure it out. So yeah, I'm sure you've you've had some moments where you had to figure it out. Oh, I've had some. Yeah, I mean, I've I mean, I have had shit hit the fan before, and you know, you just got to get up and keep going. You know, I've I've made bad decisions just like anybody else, but you know, I've made some good ones, and it's been a pretty good life. Yeah, I think at the end of all of it, that's the. Uh, if you can put tick marks on the wall for all the good things and, and cancel out all the bad, you've done pretty good for yourself. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, you know, I want to be happy and content. That's it. There, I mean, you know, what else could we know, ask fulfilled. for, right? Yeah. And it's, I don't know, you could people, a lot of people chase money and a lot of people chase power and all this other stuff. And it's just, you know, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's, uh, you're not going to find happiness and contentment in that. 
not to say that it's, I mean, you can buy plenty of stuff that you want to get with money. I mean, it's not a bad thing. No, but of course it's not. not. End all be all. Yeah, yeah, and it, you kind of get in a, a point where it becomes hollow. Like, you know, you blow up and blow up and blow up, but, you know, not having anything uh, fulfilling you if that's not what you're seeking. So, yeah, I think I think you've you've hit it dead on the on the head there. You know, you're just looking for, you know, being content and happy and having that fulfillment. And that gets you through. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's been fun. I don't know. I, I do want to paint more pictures. Yeah, I like I like painting and sculpting. I want to do more of that. So I've been trying to do a bit more of that lately, which has been fun. Well, then we'll just have to commission you to do something cool for our house because we have an office that doesn't have a lot of cool shit in it. <laughs> we want we want more cool shit in it. <laughs> cool shit's important. It is, yeah. I, I love it. We have our our office is really weird looking because you know i never thought i'd be like you know i'm gonna hang some really cool old hubcaps on my wall i did that they're not yeah. straight by any means but i mean hey they're there <laughs> they haven't fallen off yet yeah i mean that yeah. that's a goal right there we have skateboards on the walls we have posters from shows that i've gotten signed we have a lot of shit that like i just like looking at it because it's like man we did that we went there or hey so and so made too. this i mean it's just you know i mean it's just like it's not boring. It's not like you go in a bed, bath, and beyond to buy something. Oh, yeah. Know? No, I ain't doing that. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's all about live, laugh, love in this house. Ew. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> Disgusting. Cut out in wood. And, yeah. <laughs> Gross. Yeah, nobody needs another live, laugh, love wooden cutout. This no. Is, this isn't a house. It's a home. Oh, yeah. I fucking hate yeah. that one. That's the worst one. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, that's my backyard I just sent you in the shop. And uh, I'm getting a um, Spartan Royal Manor that's going to go back behind the um, Moai Tiki there behind the tree. And I'm going to do sort of a guest house and probably do an Airbnb out of it. Ooh. Oh, that'll be fun. Uh, I know. know where we're yeah. staying. Yeah, we, we've got a place yep. to stay, it sounds, folks. Oh, that looks so <laughs> <Yeah>. freaking cool. Yeah. <laughs> That is absolutely rad. Oh my god! And of course, if you want, we can uh, share any of uh, the stuff that you want to send over to us when we do all the promotions for this show. Um, right on, Jake. Is there any folks out there that you would like to give some shout outs to, or you know, folks that you would like to uh, uh, say hello to from the podcast? Um, you know, shout out to Mikey. Thanks for you know calling these guys and um. You know, I don't know. I got a lot of a lot of friends. Just hey, everybody. <laughs> too, too, too many to count. You know. Hey, that's not a bad thing. It's 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 definitely a good thing to have so many friends to count. But uh, yeah, it's fun. Mikey's a new friend. I I um, contacted him when he was doing this fiberglass front and started chatting. I've done a ton of fiberglass work. So and it's I mean, it's he's one of those friends that you meet and you end up becoming friends even though you've never met in person. That's pretty and much all our friends that we've met. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have this one friend, Greg Vaughn. He goes by Vaughn Poot. Used to make the killer crabs. And he and I have been friends for like 18 years and finally met in person. Like a couple months back, he drove down here from, from uh, Cape Cod. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, now that we're hitting the road a little bit and traveling for some of the car shows, like there's people coming out of the woodwork. Like, are y'all are y'all coming to my neck of the woods? Can yeah. you you know can can we meet up? Yeah, you know, hang out. And yeah, you know, it's been really wild when we went to Kentucky and got to meet like a bunch of people that mm -hmm. we've been friends with online. And then bam, it's like, hey, I'm so and so, and it's like, what? Like, awesome. And then you end up standing there talking for a bit. I feel so bad because <laughs> I don't realize it's them until like they tell me because I'm like, what? Because you're just so used to seeing them on the screen. And then it's like, oh, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. hi. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just used to seeing the, the thumbnail logo that they have for their Facebook page or, you know, like it, it was really cool to start putting faces to names. And, uh, you know, we'll be doing a lot more of that this year. So I guess we're going to make a trip to North Carolina at some point. We have to at this point. Yeah. Now it, I want to go. And you, you, definitely, you definitely have to come, like, summertime so it's some good beach time. Yeah. Because, oh. like, where I am here, it's like, 
I don't know, less than 10 minutes to feed in the sand. That's so always a good time. You know, it's pretty close, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I'm not the catcher's net for the hurricanes. Yeah. I, that, that whole East coast kind of gets hit every year a little bit. Uh, I think oh, we, yeah, and it always comes directly at my house. <laughs> well, I mean, literally. <laughs> yeah. I've got picture after picture when they come in, they come to my house. Oh man. Yeah. That's that one uninvited guest. They always give a name to. Yeah. But here it's like, for the most part, if it's under, you know, category three and under, it's going to be a party. Hurricane parties. So, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's above that, you get the hell out of town. You don't mess with it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, we live in a like a a bowl of you know a hill country all around us, so like we don't get hit with a lot of tornadoes. But there was a a couple uh, a few years ago that like just came through, and nobody was ready for that. Like they were like, "What the hell is that?" And it's like, "Oh, that's uh, you get in the house and get away from the windows." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what that is. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds rad. I, you know, we're gonna just start adding to the to the treks that we take this year, and next year, and the year after that. Yes, <laughs> that's the main reason. Yeah, why. you know what? Send me a picture of your of your office, and I'll see if I, maybe I'll come up with something and, oh, and uh, send wild. you guys a little. Yeah, that'll be yeah, wild, be Jake. We absolutely appreciated you being on the podcast. People out there listening to the podcast, if you are listening on Apple. Please go rate and review it, and you can do the same thing on Spotify. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to all of the things that we are doing with Rod and Style. So Rod and Style Radio can be found on any podcast platform. And then we do our live feeds every Monday from Rod and Style TV on their YouTube channel. So you can find links for this on all of our social media. And don't hesitate to reach out to us if you need any kind of help with finding that stuff. Because Sam lets everybody know where everything's at. So No. Yeah, she said no, folks. (laughs) Figure it out. Anyways, people, stay wild.